Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, 9 Better Gang here, and today I'm going to go ahead and break down the Jayhawk 24-inch robot, um, the X-Drive. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe um, in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and let's go ahead and get into it. Also, I was bullied by some of the other robot notebookers admins in order to get my nails painted, so yes, I do have Jayhawk written on my nails. First of all, I guess I'll start off with the drive base. Um, it's an X-Drive, um, as many people have noticed, which means that uh, it can go sideways. Um, and they're really cool drive bases. So if you look at the bottom of the robot here, basically you have like four pods. It's so like there, 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 there. Um, and that's forward, that's backwards, and then that's like right, and then that's left. And then you can like do any combination of those as well as adding and turning too. So like turn, turn, and then you can like turn and drive forward. So like it's a really cool drive base type. Um, and once you learn how to drive them, they're quite fun. And in order to connect them to the rest of the drive base, um, we have some 3D printed gussets. Um, so we have those right there and those right there. Um, so it's two types of gussets, the little ones and the small ones. I mean, the little ones and the big ones. Um, and these, we cut them ourselves and they also function as boxing. So you can see like right inside of there. Uh, it's basically just a giant boxing spacer. And basically, um, it's two motors per pod. Originally, we had a 12-motor X-Drive, which we just another stack going up there. Um, and that was cool. And the problem is, is we ran out of brain ports. Um, we fried too many brain ports. Um, we don't have a lot left. And additionally, we were having disconnect issues, um, where the robot would just disconnect. It usually happens, like, at least every other match. Um, and like, we tried everything. We tried swapping out the radio. We swapped out the battery cable battery. Um, swapped out some of the motors, even it kept happening. Um, but by swapping out from 12-motors to 8-motors, that completely solved the disconnect. So I guess more of the stories don't run that many motors at once. I don't know. I talked to some other teams like Ghost and Pyro that have really high motor drives, and they said they didn't have any issues. But I'm probably going to stick to... We had 10 motor drives in that work, but I probably won't go ever up to 12 again. Um, it was faster. I did do some time testing between the two, and the 12 motor X drive was about 5% faster. Um, and that's with like no downsides because you weigh more, but you're also faster and weighing more, which is really nice for playing defense on other teams. And that was also with current limiting, so these motors don't actually lose any power. Um, because if you look like right here, the intake. Let me go ahead and just like hold that. So if the intake can't run and it's jammed, it's st stalling at 2.5 amps. Um, and then even if I start running the drive motors and those are stalling, um, the intake's still getting the full 2.5 amps of power. Um, so current limiting, so yes, more drive motors is more powerful, um, just not by a lot, and it had other issues. Um, and then I guess some of the other features of the drive base are we had to ground it because these 3D prints do not transmit electricity. Um, so static would build up on these pods and then zap the brain port um, of one of the motors on the pods. So you always need to make sure you electrically isolate them. So we have two ground wires per pod, um, one main one, and those are just wires um i don't remember what type of metal it is but it conducts electricity and we also have a smaller one like right there um so that kind of just functions as like a grounding so this is all electrically connected and then that's just standard three hole gap and this is 360 rpm so blue motors 36 to 60 um and that ends up being because x drives are square root two times faster um it ends up being about the same speed as running 600 direct on 2.75 inch wheels um, and on eight motor drive, and this robot was around, uh, 15 pounds. That was a pretty good speed. I quite liked driving it. Um, I guess that's kind of it for the drive base. Oh, it's really wide. Um, because originally we had room for an entire another robot to fit inside of it. Um, which if you haven't already seen it, uh, up in the top right is our buddy hang explanation video. So go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen that already. Uh, moving on to the intake. Um, it's pretty basic. Uh, 1,200 RPM, um, 1 1.65 inch flex wheels. Um, you just put a ring in. It grabs the ring, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, the shaft's bent at this point in the season, but I can't be bothered to swap it out, and we don't have any more high-strength shafts. Um, and then it kind of gets the intake to this position. Uh, the rubber links just kind of help push it into place. Uh, same with these rubber links on the side, too. Um, so, like, if I put the intake, like, ring all the way over there, um, it funnels itself to the middle. Um, and then the hooks can just kind of pick it up. Um, the hooks are the exact same as we had on our mower robot. Um, just with like the half inch, then the polycarb, then the two inch, and then the polycarb on top. Um, they're literally the exact same hooks. We didn't even bother making, one of them isn't actually, um, but the other ones were literally just taken off that robot. And then automated hook positioning system so that, um, they stop and we can hold two rings nicely. Um, and I'm never going to have to worry about the hook stopping there. So it's just spins them the correct amount. And then that can intake. Boom, I'm scoring two ranks. Um, and now we have the green box, um, which looks quite silly. Um, it's got a little color sensor in there. Uh, you can kind of see him uh, poking out right there. 
and uh, it's a silly green box, but we never color sorted the wrong color at Worlds. Um, it had 100% consistency, always descored the wrong color, and never accidentally scored the incorrect color. Or never, the, when you had the correct color, never accidentally threw it out. Um, so there's that. Um, the green just acts as a backdrop because it's in the middle of red and blue, so it gives it a nice consistent color. And because it's all surrounding, it doesn't really matter what outside light you have shining in. Um, and the reason that that one is over there and that one isn't is because that snapped at Mecca and it still worked. Um, like, it, it's still strange to me because that, like, the second match we ever ran the green filter, this snapped. But this one has just hung on all season, and this guy is an old robot. We built him in November. Um... So he's probably been to like, I don't know, probably close to 100 matches, including scrimmages. And that side's hung on and that one snapped. Um, hooks, basic stuff. It's a 200 RPM, 18 tooth sprocket. Um, and it uses lifted intake tech, um, similar to what we had on the MOA robot except this one is motorized instead of pneumatic, which that originally was. So down there, you can see we have a 100 RPM motor. Now uh, that goes over. There's a shaft running all the way across the bottom in there. Um, you can see right there. Um, and that shaft just has chain going up over there. These are IQ sprockets. Um, they have their holes drilled out inside. Um, so they can fiddle around a high strength shaft. Um, so then they don't spin with the shaft, but they have the same center of rotation so that the hook system doesn't move. And we can just raise that up, uh, to do wall sticks. Um, and that also raises up the intake, um, because there is string mounted right there and that is connected down to the intake. And that was also nice for doing two stacks of rings and even four stacks out of the corners. It could do those as well. Um, so you can kind of see here if I grab these. Um, if I wanted the bottom ring, I can just like run the intake and drive forward. Um, but then if I wanted the top ring, I could just like raise up the lift, drive forward, lower the lift intake. And now I have top ring. Um, and it could also kind of do that for the, um, four stacks in the corner. Uh, it would kind of like raise up. You can get like rid of the fourth ring, then intake, and then just kind of back in and out. Um, which is what we did during autonomous, which that video will be linked up there. So that's kind of all the basic stuff. Um, the gold clamp is the exact same as what we had on MOA, like literally the exact same. We just took this clamp off and stuck it on the new robot. Um, the back part, we changed slightly. Um, these are on rollers. So those are just like free spinning. Um, and that helped just the goal align, but there's nothing really fancy there. It doesn't really matter what orientation the goal was in. You could just like slowly drive back into it and the goal would line itself up, get clamped on, um, it's got the hook in the middle right there to stop teams from just pulling the goal out. Um, it's got those on the side in order to stop the goal from wobbling side to side. And then it's got that screw right there to actually rotate the goal back. Um, two cylinder clamp and now goals in there. And now you can see uh, we can just score rings. Um, and that was quite consistent. And then uh, color sorting. I guess I can kind of show that off. I just got to swap programs real quick. And now I can just drive back into the goal. Um, and the goal filter clamp, that worked every time. We didn't ever not grab a goal during Auton, so that's good. And now um, you can see color sort. And he just kind of throws the ring off. Um, so that worked. Um, basically the math behind that is it would detect that, and then it would know that it would need to spin like two more rotations plus spinning to whatever that specific point was, which I think was like, 90 degrees, because it would reset the rotation every time the hook spun around. So, like, the robot doesn't know the difference between that state and that state, because they're functionally the exact same. All the hooks are identical. Um, you have distance sensors here for auto. Um, lots of 3D printed triangle braces, like right there and right there. Um, another guy wire, just so that the intake stays grounded over there. Just one more thing. Um, the back piece of poly's in there. Just because if we do end up with like a ring, it gets like jammed in there. Um, it's not hard because I can just run the hooks in reverse and they just go out the back. And it's kind of funny because the ring just goes wherever it wants to. I don't care because it's not inside the robot anymore, but it just, it's kind of funny. Um, 
it was just a silly robot. He was kind of old by worlds, um, just because, again, he was catted in September and built in November, so it was kind of outdated. Um, but it was a fun robot. Um, I love X-Drive. Um, probably won't be able to build it this year just because of the barrier. But it was a very large robot, and it was a lot of fun. Um, thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and I will see you in the next one.